Hello YouTube subscribers and friends and family. This video is to answer a question on a minimum size solar system for refrigeration. I had a friend ask me what it would take to get their refrigerator off grid. And since that's where I started initially by getting my refrigerator off grid, I can answer some of those questions. I bought this chest freezer for $75 on Craigslist and I mounted a electronic uh, digital controller I got off of eBay for $14 and that allows this to be a freezer or a refrigerator this one's sitting here just for standby this one is running here as a freezer you can see the controller is 15.6 Celsius minus 15.6 Celsius but at the touch of a button I can make it a refrigerator again this one we have as a standby unit it can be a refrigerator or a freezer depending on what values you enter into the controller and what I would do when I use this as a refrigerator you can see I put a piece of foam insulation above the compressor self shelf I put foam insulation on the lid which is the only place you can insulate these because they have their coils their evaporator coils on the just under the skin so you have evaporator coils and condensing coils on a refrigeration unit and a compressor so I would take and put my food in compartments in Tupperware containers and so if you were trying to get to your your meat or your cheese you'd have to dig down through your salad and everything and pull all these containers out to get to the one you wanted uh, and then stack it all back in kind of a hassle but the benefit was that this unit right here only takes 220 watt hours a day that's it now I could run this refrigerator very easily on uh, 200 watts of solar and what I started out with was two 100 watt solar panels and a really inexpensive charge controller and one uh, 1100 watt power bright modified sine wave inverter and a 100 amp hour 12 volt deep cycle uh, battery flooded lead acid battery and I got this refrigerator off grid easily with enough power left over to run LED lighting in the house and charge laptops and that sort of thing on 200 watts of solar now mind you this is a chest refrigerator and when you open the door the cold stays in the bottom when you open the door on an upright refrigerator all of the cold air flows right out the bottom and then before you get it closed you hear the compressor start again so if you had 200 watts of solar and a chest refrigerator like this one uh, you would be fine charging laptops and, and having some LED lighting in the night with with power to spare what we're currently running is an upright refrigerator and yes when you open the door all the cold falls out the bottom but this one has no defrost cycle so it isn't uh, real expensive to run it doesn't use a lot of power to run and the things that makes these upright refrigerators use so much power is they have a defrost cycle on the refrigerator side and the freezer side well this one doesn't have that you have to manually defrost it you can see it's time to to do it again but what makes this thing so eff energy efficient is it has its coils on the back that means I can insulate I have an inch and a half of insulation on all of the surfaces on the whole refrigerator so this upright refrigerator is running 660 watt hours a day and that's not very much the chest refrigerator I showed you runs 220 watt hours a day which is much much better the refrigerator that used to uh, be in here was a, a big upright with one of those side by side uh, refrigerators and they were two kilowatt hours a day that's 2000 watt hours a day and then I had another one that was 1500 watt hours a day that's just too much power for me to try to handle with our solar system 
So with that chest refrigerator that we made, I only needed two 100 watt solar panels. Now out here on my little camp trailer, this is the battery that I was running on that uh, small chest refrigerator. It is a 100 amp hour, 12 volt, true deep cycle battery. And that was all that I needed, one battery and two solar panels one small charge controller, and an inverter. Now in here in the closet, in the, the small camp trailer, I've mounted the inverter. These are pretty inexpensive. A good one to get, you can get off of Amazon. It's called a PowerBright, an 1100 watt modified sine wave. And uh, these small in a uh, AC inverters at 1000 watts, they're able to uh, operate that small chest refrigerator or that little upright refrigerator that I showed you without any problem. They've been running for over a year and there's no sign of wear on the refrigerator or the inverters. These are pretty inexpensive. PowerBright's a good company for a cheap modified sine wave and last time I checked you could get an 1100 watt for $85. The battery I just showed you here in the US they're about $80. Now to the solar panels. These are monocrystalline. They're 100 watts each. And I bought these uh, as a kit. They come in a 100 watt kit, a 200, a 300, and a 400 watt kit. And in the kit, depending on which size kit, you get this charge controller. And this charge control controller will handle up to 400 watts of solar. Uh, more than that if you're at 24 volts. Also in the kit, it comes with MC4 connectors. And the, if you got just a 200 watt solar kit, it would come with that charge controller, two of these panels, the two panels hooked to these MC4 splitters, and then you'll have two wires that go to your charge controller and then you have two wires that go down to your battery. And then from your battery, uh, you go down to your little modified sine wave inverter and then you can plug your AC power into the inverter. So Amazon sells these Renogy panels. The 400 watt kit is 669 shipped in the lower 48 and 